olmuş dünya kimle tutarsa Bir uçanla bir de kaçan kurtuluyorsa Gönül aşktan göz bakıştan alınır Hey what's up guys, it is Saiku or Sam here and welcome back to the channel and today I'm very excited to bring you guys a brand new tutorial series where we we're gonna be looking into the basics of C Sharp and I will be going through variables and functions very quickly for you guys in this video and I also want you or actually challenge you to follow up with this video obviously but also let me know in the comments what you think I should actually cover up in the next episode of this series so if you would like me to go through functions or variables or you know whatever else in depth a little bit like further than what I'm gonna do in this video let me know in the comments and I'll make sure to include that in the next video and with that being said, let's get started with this. So first and foremost, a quick run through. I have a basic new scene and a basic new project in its own. Um, so it's quite empty as you can see. I just created a new scene and there's nothing specific about this. So what we're gonna start off by doing is I will actually start by creating a new folder and I'm going to call this scripts. And this is going to be the folder where I will locate all my scripts just to make sure that we don't lose track. You don't have to have this folder if you're going to follow this series. It's not necessary, it's not a requirement, but I would still suggest you to if you want to follow this 100%. So shouldn't be a problem. Um, next up, we're obviously going to create our C Sharp script here. And I'm going to call the script for... Um, I'm, I actually didn't think of the name, but we can say, I don't know, like script A. That's a very boring name, I guess, but I, I, I will just keep this name for the moment. Um, if we go further in this series, we might change the name of the script for like in the future, but that's coming in the future. Like I said, <laughs> I'm not going to bother with this anymore. Um, all right, so I got the script open here in C, C Sharp, obviously, in my uh, Visual Studio program. You don't need Visual Studio if you don't have it, but I would suggest you to get it if you do want to, um, because it's an amazing uh, software which lets you, which allows you to code. But if you're using Mono Develop, which is a standard one for Unity, that's completely fine. It's still going to be the same thing. So I'm going to start off by emptying the script quite a bit. So everything inside of public class script A, we're going to remove. So the two functions or the two voids that were started or like created in the start of this, uh, this script, it's going to be removed. So now I'm actually going to create our, we're, we are actually going to create our first variable ever. So we're going to say public uh, game object. Mm, we could say like, cube object okay so basically what we do here is we set this variable to public which means that we are allowed to use this variable inside of our inspector in unity uh, which is this window so and also we are allowed to use this variable as a type of a game object meaning that we use a game object inside of unity like we create a new cube and then we assign the cube into the script by using the game object variable and this is not the name of the variable this is just type and the name is what we actually say here so we say cube object that means the name of the variable is cube object so whenever we are trying to achieve this or like access this variable from any other script or even this script we are going to use cube object as the name um, and I want to show you guys a little bit further how it looks in Unity when you actually open this up. So what we're going to do is now that we save the script, we are going to go to Unity. We're going to drag script A, the script that we just created, into our, let's say, main camera. Uh, this does not have to necessarily be the main camera object, but we can use any object at all. And you can see that now that we have the script added, you have a field open here, which, mean, which says cube object. And if we go back to Visual Studio and inside of, instead of cube object, we say psychos cube, we save, and then we go back to Unity, you'll see that the name of the cube, cube object variable is changed now to psychos cube. So by like talking about cube so much, we're actually going to add a cube into our scene. So we just go to game object, top left corner, we click 3D object, and then we pick cube. 
There we go. So now we have a brand new cube added to our scene. If you're already familiar with Unity's UI and interface, interface, sorry, uh, you shouldn't be having a little bit like that much trouble with this so far. But um, the new thing should be that we actually have a script where we have a new variable as well, and it's public. Uh, speaking of which, I also want to show you guys what it happens if we set this public game object to private game object. So we go to Visual Studio, we change it to private, go uh, save the script, obviously, the best practice ever, <laughs> and we go back to Unity, and now this field should disappear. There we go. So that means that the, f uh, the field is no longer, or this variable is no longer accessible through the inspector, but it does not mean that you cannot access this script or this variable at all. You can use functions, you can use classes and whatever else you can use for editing this variable, but it's the best practice if you want to have it public so that you can change it through the inspector to make it easier for yourself. But it's never a requirement for you to actually have it public. So just keep it in mind. Um, so now we set it back to public, we saved it and we go back to Unity. Now the field is popped up again. And what we're going to do is I'm going to drag and drop the cube object that we created inside of Unity into our Psyche's cube field. So now we have it added and the variable data is actually set to be the cube, meaning that the whatever variable you create, even if it's a number, even if it's a digit, like a single digit, a game object, you know, string of like a line of text or whatever it is, it means that it's going to hold somewhat of a data that you actually type in, give it, or assign it. So in this case, we created a game object, and then we assign the object that we created inside of Unity, meaning that the variable is going to hold the cube that we actually just dragged in here and assigned it to. Um, and this allows us to use this cube, the 3D object itself, through scripting a lot easier. So for example, I want to demonstrate this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to jump a few lines down here and we're going to say public void start. And below the curly brackets that are ending, that are starting and ending the public void start, we're going to say public void update. The difference between these two functions, I also want to just note, these two are basically built into Unity. And the difference is start is going to be ran once as soon as the game starts. Update is going to go go on and on as long as the game is you know running. So if you have a field, if you have a statement inside of void update, it's going to run every single frame, not even second. And public void start is going to run one single frame as soon as you start the game and no longer. So for a demonstration here. I want to go to public void update and I want to show you how to actually access the game object variable that we created earlier. So I want to say print, which is a built in function for Unity, which means that you print a type of da data inside of Unity's console. So we just say print inside of parentheses, we say psychos cube. And now this is going to um, this is going to print out the name of the object together with the game object type. So what we want to do is we want to say dot name. And this has to be inside of the parentheses as well. So now we just say, simply we just say, as soon as the game is running, every single frame of the, frame, frame of the game, you're going to have to print the name of this object or this variable, which is a object. <laughs> and it's going to be the name of it specifically. So if we go back to Unity now, after we save the script and we go run, so we just play the game. We open up our console as soon as the game is ready. It's going to take its time there. There we go. We go to console and you can see that it's already printing out the name of the object. This is a very bad practice. There we go. So now you can see that it's printing out cube. And what I want to do is I want to change the name of this cube, but to make it more challenging for you, I actually want to do it via scripting. So I want to go back to Visual Studio and I want to say inside of our public void start, I want to say psychos cube dot name is equal to, let's say we're going to say mm -mm, psychos 
cube. Very original, right? So now we can go back to Unity. We can play the game. And you will see that as soon as the game runs, the actual object name will also be changed to Psyche's Cube. And you will have Psyche's Cube changed inside of our console too. And now a little bit of methodology here. The reason I use public void start instead of public void update in order to change the name of the cube is simply because this is a one time only required statement, meaning that you don't need to change the name to Psyche's cube every single frame. It's just going to be heavy on the game or heavy on the performance for no, literally no reason. The printing, however, is being done for the moment being inside of our public void update because I want to print it out as many times as possible. As you can see, it's being printed out 515 times in just a few seconds. And I could just delete this, go to public void start and say print psycuscube.name. That should work just as fine as doing inside of our public void or the public void update, but the reason is going to be, the difference is that we are going to print this one time only. So we can go back to Unity, obviously after saving the script, we can play the game and you'll see that it's only printing once now. So that's a little bit of practice for variables and functions in Unity. Um, this is not a very, very like, in-depth tutorial, I know, but if you would like me to make a little bit more in-depth tutorial of like functions, variables, or any other kind of uh, thing you're actually wondering of, like e even if it's like loops, etc., which we're going to get into later in this tutorial series, let me know in the comments. I'll still try to make them a little bit earlier. And with that being said, guys, I hope you all enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, make sure to click that like button down below and hit the subscribe if you want to stay up to tune for new videos coming soon. And once again, let me know in the comments what you think of this new series and if you have any suggestions, any recommendations, or any feedback. And with that being said, I'll catch you guys in the comments. See you guys. Bye-bye. Gönül ağrısı yeah.